A pulsar is a star that emits regular oscillations, I say. With a luminosity that does pulse in a metronomic way. When you look into the night sky from Earth's surface, you see the sparkling stars in the sky. But what is this? These stars twinkle slightly and most do this I share Because of slight disturbances in Earth's atmosphere But when an astrophysicist observed the night sky in the 1960s And other wavelengths she saw stars that flicker over time regularly Professor Dane Johnson Bell Burnell made the first discovery of a pulsar star As a student at Cambridge University These pulsars are well outside our solar system But found within the middle Milky Way, that galaxy that holds our sun. More than 2,000 pulsars have been discovered so far in the Milky Way out of the 100,000 million stars. If you look closely at one of these pulsar stars, we can see what astronomers theorize they are. They're highly magnetized rotating neutron stars that emit beams of electromagnetic radiation out of their magnetic poles, I admit. They're observed when a beam of emission is pointing towards the Earth. It's responsible for the pulsed appearance of emission, of course. This is similar to a pulsar, but how are they born? Let's look at this massive star run out of fuel and what will take form. When a massive star runs out of fuel, the core does collapse. It crushes every proton and electron into a neutron at last. When the collapsing star is between one and three solar masses, they stop collapsing. And leaving behind a neutron star that is this These neutron stars don't emit enough radiation To be detected out in the vastness of space on their run But when neutron stars you spin in a regular rotation They're observed to have regular interval pulses of radiation Pulsars have very strong magnetic fields Which funnel jets of particles out along to magnetic poles You've learned this in this song these accelerated particles produce very powerful beams of light. They are swept around as the star rotates, making them pulse at night. An example of this pulsing that we observe in a pulsar would be the light spinning in a lighthouse that you can see very far. A pulsar is a star that emits regular oscillations, I say, with a luminosity that does pulse in a metronomic way. I star, also called the black hole star. How bizarre! I'm a hypothetical type of extremely massive luminous star. I'm a quasi star. I may have existed early in the history of the universe. Now let's learn more about me. I'm a quasi star, and I am hypothetical. But what's this? It means I haven't been proven as yet to exist. I'm a theorized star, bigger than a red super giant star at 10 billion kilometers in radius. I'd be the biggest by far Here's a size comparison of what I'd look like hypothetically In our universe against other stars So you can clearly see Let's start with your sun in the center of your solar system With a radius of 696,347 The sun is classified as a yellow dwarf star Which is massive to humans but very small compared to other stars I'm 7,000 times the size of your sun Which is quite in size, I'd be bigger than anyone. This is Pollux, a red giant star. It's 5.5 million kilometers in size this far. But when you compare it to me, it really looks tiny. I would consume it if it got too close, pulling it in with my gravity. Here's a red super giant star going by the name of Betelgeuse with a radius of 617 million kilometers of energy to produce. But when compared to me, Let's move on to the next star next to me. This is UI Scutai, a red supergiant as well. At 1.1 billion kilometers, it's massive, you can tell. This is what it looks like when compared to me in size. It's hard to fathom just how massive I am, it's no surprise. This is a red supergiant, or possibly a red hypergiant star. It goes by the name of Stevenson 2 18, it's the biggest by far. It has a radius in kilometers of 1.4 small compared to me in the night sky maybe astronomers can discover a quasi star like me someday you could study astronomy and make me a reality i'm 
a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc. My name is AG100546. I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc from the constellation of Mosca. Now hear this. My name is HG100546. I'm 316.4 light years from your Earth with exoplanet. I'm a star with a circumstellar disk. From the distance of 0.2 AU to a few hundred AU, now this. I'm found in the constellation of Muska. Hear this. I'm a B type star with an exoplanet that does orbit. I have an exoplanet that goes by the name you see. It is HD. 100546B I'm HD 100546B I was discovered at the very large telescope in Chile Astronomers think I might be a large planet or brown dwarf Located in the disk around my star on my orbital course I'm a gas giant exoplanet, they know this for sure My mass is 752 Jupiters When orbit takes 249 years around my star I'm 53 AU away from my star That is far My discovery was announced in 2014 That's all I have to report That's enough about me I am back again It's HD 100546 Let me tell you a bit more About my disc My circumstellar disc was observed By the Hubble telescope Which should spiral patterns What they mean no one really knows My disc is fairly flat With a circular shape With a wide gap thought to be carved By my exoplanet How great When looking at the night sky Try to locate the constellation of Muska But you have to look late I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc My name is AG100546 I'm a star surrounded by a circumstellar disc From the constellation of Muska Now hear this Majoris 
one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am V. Y. Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy. This is an interstellar course. I'm believed to be discovered in 1801 when French astronomer Jerome Lalande locked me in my recordings begun. A red class M hypergiant, what I'm classified as. Giant stars show tremendous luminosities and have very high rates of mass loss by stellar winds you see. My distance from the Earth is about 4,000 light years away. One light year equals about 5.9 trillion miles, I'd say. I used to be the largest star in the universe, you see, until some hyper giants like you, Ice Gatai, dwarfed me. I am the wide Canis Majoris. One of the largest stars known in the present universe I am V. Y. Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course If you wanna locate me while looking up in the night sky You'd have to use the telescope, you can't see me with the naked eye If you have a telescope, point to the constellation of Canis Major And look to the left to the delta star for Fixation. 990 million kilometers is my radius Aren't you glad you are paying attention and learning all of this? 5,822 degrees in Fahrenheit is what my temperature is thought to be I'm hot and extremely bright and If I replace the sun in your present solar system I would consume all planets past Jupiter like they were crumbs I am the Y Canis Majoris one of the largest stars known in the present universe I am V. Y. Canis Majoris My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course Massive stars like me, we live a very, very short life I'm reaching the end of my existence, which is part of my strife I rapidly shed mass because I'm running out of fuel in my course Scientists think I'll explode into a supernova, but no one Sure. I am V. Y. Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am V. Y. Canis Majoris, my home's a Milky Way galaxy. This is an interstellar course. I am V. Y. Canis Majoris, one of the largest stars known in the present universe. I am V. Y. Canis Majoris. My home's a Milky Way galaxy, this is an interstellar course. I am UI Scutai, the largest star in our galaxy. Find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai. A red super giant in the Scutum constellation am I? I was first cataloged in 1860 by German astronomers at Bonn Observatory. I was named BD-125055 until my second survey I was found to be slightly more bright. That's when I was named UI Scutai, the 38th variable star of the constellation Scutum am I? I'm the largest known star in the Milky Way galaxy, but because I'm so far from Earth, you need a telescope to see me. I'm 30 times the sun's mass, but I have a radius more than 1700 times greater than the Earth's sun I span. I am UI Scutai. The largest star in our galaxy, find me in the night sky. I am UI Scutai, a red super giant in the Scutum constellation. Am I? I'm 9,500 light years away from your Earth. One light year equals about 5.88 trillion miles, for what that's worth. I'm known to be one of the most luminous stars, and I am a red super giant. I hope you like me so far. I'm close to the supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, galactic center, which is the center of our galaxy. I'm so large if you replaced your sun with me, my photosphere would span past Jupiter. 
triggers or but as you can see I begun to fuse helium and continue to fuse hydrogen in the shell around my core based on models of stellar evolution after fusing heavy elements my core will begin to produce iron disrupting the balance of gravity and radiation in its core and resulting in a core collapse supernova which is expected in stars like me look for me in the night sky within your galaxy I am you I scoot I the largest star in our galaxy find me in the night sky I am you I scoot I a red super giant in the scutum constellation am I I am you I scoot I the largest star in our galaxy find me in the night sky I am you I scoot I a red super giant in the Scutum constellation am I? We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. I'm the Crab Pulsar, a young neutron star. I'm Calvera, an isolated neutron star that's far. My name's Bela X1, I'm a neutron star as well. Sirius B, that's me, a small white dwarf as you can tell. I'm EBLMJ 555-57AB. My name's Trappist 1, an ultra cool red dwarf star in sight. I'm Proxima Centauri, a main sequence red dwarf star. I am your son, a yellow dwarf that isn't too far. Alpha Centauri A is an orange star, you see. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star, that's me. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. VFTS-352, contact binary 1 and 2. Composed of two very hot brain massive stars that orbit each other, it's true. My name is Pollux, a red giant star here. Arcturus is a red giant star, I hope I made that clear. R136A1 is a wolf riot star thus far. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Rigel is here, a blue-white supergiant you can see. I am Beetlejuice and I'm a red supergiant in class. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hypergiant star with mass. I'm U.I. Scutai, the biggest red supergiant this far. Join us to sing the chorus, now get your head out of the stars. We're all stars, we're all stars, compared to each other by size. You can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky. We're all stars, we're all stars, our colors vary, you know. We're made mostly of hydrogen and helium, here we go. We're all stars, we're all stars compared to each other by size you can see a lot of us when you look into the night sky we're all stars we're all stars our colors vary you know we're made mostly of hydrogen and helium here we go my name is Rigel a blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. William Herschel studied astronomy. In the year of 1781, he discovered me. I have an estimated age of seven to nine. 
million years as for an estimate that's fine. I've exhausted my core of hydrogen fuel, becoming a super giant after I expanded and I cooled. I expect to end my life as a type 2 supernova. Here is more, leaving a neutron star or black hole, but no one knows for sure. I'm classified as a blue white supergiant star, how fun, which is a hot luminous star that's bigger than your sun. I belong to the Orion constellation, locate me from the celestial equator from Earth on my run. I am visible throughout the world, of this I am sure, located in the hunter's leg of Orion, I assure. From the Earth my distance is 860 light years to be clear, one light year is the distance light travels in one Earth year. 61,500 to 363,000 times as luminous as the sun my brightness is so grand but i'll vary slightly in brightness until the day i'm done i'm thought to be 18 to 24 times more massive than your sun my radius is a straight line from my center to my circumference which is more than 70 times that of your sun in reference my surface temperature is 12,100 kk meaning kelvin a base unit of temperature in the si i say the next time you're out at night look for orion in the sky look for the hunter's leg i'm bright to the naked eye my name is rigel a blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far. My name is Rigel. A blue white super giant star in the Orion constellation. I am the brightest so far.
particles. My ion tail is also known as a coma, which spans up to a hundred thousand kilometers across. Not told ya. The length of my ion tail will blow your mind for sure. It's estimated at about 22 million kilometers. The next time you can see me in your solar system is estimated to be in the year of 2061. I'm Halley's Comet, the most famous comet in the galaxy. About Dating back more than 2,000 years, you've seen. We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. Alpha Centauri A and B are sun-like stars. We're the brightest stars in the constellation Centaurus by far. Alpha Centauri A has 1.1 times the mass and 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun in this class. Alpha Centauri B is smaller and cooler, you should know. At 0.9 times the sun's mass and 0.4 the luminosity shown. We orbit around a common center or around one another so you'd understand better. With an orbital period of almost 80 years by far and from a distance we're so close we look like one star. I'm Proxima Centauri, a small and faint red dwarf star. You cannot see me with the naked eye though I'm the closest star by far. I'm about 4.24 light years from the earth and I'm the closest star to the sun for what that is worth. Discovered in 1915 by astronomer Robert Eins, I'm sure. In South Africa at the Union Observatory in Johannesburg. My Latin name Proxima Centauri means when this is defined. The nearest star of Centaurus, that's all that's assigned. We're Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to the solar system your Earth is from. Alpha Centauri is a triple star system. We're 4.37 light years away from your sun. We're Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which forms a pair of stars called binary. Alpha Centauri A officially Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B officially Toliman I trust. Centauri C officially Proxima Centauri. Here we'll learn about our size and our luminosity. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter on the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. Alignments between Jupiter and Saturn are pretty rare. Only occurring around once in every 20 years. But this upcoming conjunction's exceptionally rare Only because of how close we planets will appear It's said the last time this occurred was in medieval times 
In the year of 1226 was the closest that we aligned Alignments between these two planets happens once every 20 years But this conjunction will be very rare because of how close we appear We'll be aligning on the same day as the winter solstice On December 21st, 2020, the whole world can witness this if you live in the northern hemisphere, looking low in the southwestern sky, you can see a shining bright shortly after sunset with the naked eye. We'll appear extremely close for about a month ahead, but we won't make such a close approach again until the year 2400. Typically, Jupiter orbits the sun every 12 years. Saturn's orbit around the sun takes about 30 years. Every couple of decades, Jupiter laps Saturn in flight. Be sure to watch the sky December 21st in 2020 at night. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter. On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. Jupiter and Saturn will come within 0.1 degrees of each other. Forming the first visible double planet in 800 years will clutter. On the winter solstice, December 21st in 2020. Look to the night sky to see this event. The joy it'll bring is plenty. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. I'm a molecular cloud. I'm a type of nebula. I have a high density and a very low temperature. This combination creates a gas molecular hydrogen. That's primarily what I'm of along with cosmic dust within when the force of gravity exceeds the outward push of gas the pressure is so great that i can't help it and start to collapse which is caused from a shockwave from a near exploding star or when two molecular clouds collide now isn't that bizarre when the gravity is too strong i break apart into smaller clouds each cloud is a star's beginning in which i am very proud protostars are the name of the clouds that do break free let me introduce a protostar that was a part of me Hello there, I'm the beginning of any kind of star Let me introduce myself to you, I am a protostar My core is not hot enough for fusion to occur To achieve that level of stardom, that process is a chore The first thing I do when I break free from my molecular cloud I start to spin until I form this disc around me you see now As the disc rotates I produce a strong magnetic field Pulling gas and dust into my center core as I reveal The infalling gas releases a kinetic energy Creating heat increasing the temperature in the center of me At this point I can transform into a hydrogen burning star Which is when the new Fusion starts in a protostar This is when I cross over to stage 3 called Titori We play our different roles in the star formation you see This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages In the evolution of a star and all its basic changes I'm a Titori star now, also a pre-main sequence Star. My job's to clear away the dust and gas and send it really far My stellar winds create bipolar outflows that decrease my mass Till I'm a main sequence star, my center burning nuclear gas Now I'm a main sequence star, now just like the sun you know For billions of years I will burn throughout my light show Converting hydrogen to helium is how fusion exists It wants to blow me apart but has a hard time doing this Cause of gravity of equal power pushing me in I'm able to stay burning since the fusion did begin There are many different kinds of stars throughout the universe Go learn about them all now that you know how they are birthed This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth The star names you will encounter are some 
basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. This is the stellar evolution of a star in the universe. A nebula is the beginning of a star before its birth. The star names you will encounter are some basic different stages in the evolution of a star and all its basic changes. a moon size comparison in our solar system we're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done we're measured by our radius you'll hear in a bit we'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit my name is tethys i'm one of saturn's 82 moons my radius is 531 kilometers it is true I am Dion, I orbit Saturn, you do see My radius is 561 kilometers, that is me Ariel is my name, Uranus is what I orbit My radius is 578 kilometers, I'm third on the list Hi, I'm Umbriel, Uranus is where I'm from my radius is 584 kilometers, I am spun. I'm the moon of Sharon, I float in orbit Pluto. Radius is 606 kilometers, this I do know. I'm Iapetus, a moon of Saturn. Radius of 734 kilometers as I turn. Oberon is my name, outermost moon of Uranus. 761 kilometers is my radius I am Rhea, Saturn's second largest moon Radius of 763 kilometers, see you soon Here's a moon-sized comparison in our solar system We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit not Titania, the largest moon of Uranus 788 kilometers is my radius The name is Triton, the largest moon of Neptune I'm 1,353 kilometers in radius in this tune Europa is frozen and the moon of Jupiter My radius is 1,560 kilometers I am the moon of the planet my radius is 1737 kilometers for what it's worth Hello, I'm Io, the strangest moon of Jupiter With a radius of 1821 kilometers I'm Callisto, I orbit Jupiter, you see My radius is 2410 kilometers, that's all on me Titan is my name, Saturn's my claim to fame 2574 kilometers is my radius Yes, I claim. I'm gonna meet the largest moon in the solar system. Jupiter is what I orbit, yeah, that's where I'm from. My radius is 2634 kilometers now. Let's listen to the chorus while the moons take a bow. Here's a moon size comparison in our solar system. We're happy if you shed some light on us until we are done. We're measured by our radius, you'll hear in a bit We'll also tell you the planet in which we orbit This is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse my totality is awe inspiring, so don't miss this. This celestial event is called a solar eclipse. Let me tell you about it so you can understand all this. A solar eclipse is caused by the moon, that is me. I'm passing between the sun and the earth till black is what you see. Here are several stages and some visual tips that you can use to recognize a total solar eclipse. Stage one is called a partial eclipse is when the sun's disk is partially blocked by the moon like this stage two is called bailey's beats which are bright spots of light it's when low-lying valleys on the moon's edge allow sunlight through that's right stage three is sometimes called the diamond ring this stage is key in which marks the last few seconds before totality the last bit of sunlight that is able to shine through the low-lying valleys creates a single flash of 
light on the side of the moon. The fourth and most important stage is called totality. When the moon completely covers the disk of the sun, this is what you see. Then comes the final stages in which the sun will grow a crescent on the opposite side of the Bailey's beads, which once had shown. But before you see this celestial event, there's a few safety precautions for this is a total solar eclipse Come see my narrow path in which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring, so don't miss this On Monday, August 21st, 2017 There's a total solar eclipse North America will see But the totality you wanna see can only be observed from Lincoln Beach Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, so I've heard. The path of totality is 70 miles wide, they say. Seen in 14 states in the continental U.S. of A. Totality lasts a few minutes, so be sure to be there. And please use special safety glasses so your vision isn't impaired. You can buy these special solar eclipse glasses online. So protect your eyes from the sun while having a great time. This is a total solar eclipse. Which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring So don't miss this A solar eclipse has several areas We need to discuss Take a look at this picture To learn each part is a must Here's a penumbra A partially shaded outer region Surrounding the umbra A fully shaded inner part that's darkened A partial eclipse is what you're seeing Which I travel on the Earth's surface This is a total solar eclipse My totality is awe-inspiring So don't miss this I am the Milky Way Galaxy Look in the night sky to see a part of me I am the Milky Way Galaxy your solar system's just a tiny part of me. The Milky Way name came from a Greek goddess named Hera, who spilled milk across the sky. Greeks believed in that era. When you look at the darkest sky on a clear summer night, and you see the image of the Milky Way clear in sight, remember you can only see a small part of me, called the galactic core in my galaxy. Astronomers can't look at me from outside the galaxy, because I'm so massive and you don't have the technology based on other galaxies we see outside of our own is why we conclude that our galaxy spiraled as i'm shown when you look at a side view of the milky way here you see me as a flat disc with a bulge center i appear i am the milky way galaxy look in the night sky to see a part of me i am the milky way galaxy your solar system's just a tiny part of me I was born about 13.6 billion years ago That's a hypothesis given from astronomers though I am 100,000 light years in diameter That's an estimate given by NASA though they can't be sure Your solar system's this tiny dot that you see right here Astronomers think that Orion's first where your system appears Your system's guess to be 20 5,000 light years from the galactic center of the Milky Way shown here About 230 million years is what your system takes To orbit around the Milky Way center's cool shape 200 to 400 billion stars live in me That's an estimate only based on our astronomy Over 100 billion planets might exist in me Maybe someday you can see them in our galaxy I am the Milky Way Galaxy Look in the night sky to see a part of me I am the Milky Way Galaxy 
your solar system's just a tiny part of me Let's take a look at all the parts that you think I'm made of We'll start by looking down at the galaxy above The galactic cores, the rotational center you can't see Because of the interstellar dust it cannot be studied It's believed the center is a supermassive black hole When astronomers find out more than I will let you know You'll notice the galactic bar and also the long bar There's the three KPC arms, there is a near and there's a far Then we have the Sagittarius and the Norma arms Then the Orion spur where your solar system spins on The Scutum Centaurus and Perseus arm Are two major spirals and full of the galaxy's charm Finally the outer arm and the new outer arm Are the final spirals I will mention in this song I am the Milky Way Galaxy Look in the night sky to see a part of me I am the Milky Way Galaxy your solar system's just a tiny part of me I am the Milky Way Galaxy Look in the night sky to see a part of me I am the Milky Way Galaxy Your solar system's just a tiny part of me This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know of course. I am Ceres, I am a dwarf planet. Maki Maki's a dwarf planet as well but didn't plan it. I am Haumea, a dwarf planet in this group. Pluto is a dwarf, but used to be a planet, it's true. Aries is a dwarf planet in this mix. The Earth's moon is where your eyes are transfixed. Mercury is here, an official planet. I'm the planet of Mars, I'm sure you all know this. I'm planet Venus, my size you may think is large. Planet Earth is next, and the humans think that they're in charge. Neptune's a planet in our solar system, wow! Planet Uranus is here, I wish I could take a bow. Planet Saturn has rings, if you think I am big. Check out planet Jupiter, I hope you can dig. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know of course. I am the sun, a yellow dwarf that isn't far. I am Sirius A, a main sequence star. My name is Pollux, a red giant star, it's true. Arcturus is a red giant star, this I thought you knew. I'm Aldebaran, a red giant star, that's me. Hi, I'm Rigel, a blue-white super giant, you see. I am Beetlejuice, and I'm a red super giant in class. I'm in Taurus, I'm a red super giant that won't last. V.Y. Canis Majoris, a red hyper giant star. I'm U.I. Scutai, the biggest red super giant this far. I am the Milky Way Galaxy, and you I'll sing the chorus together with glee. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well known objects we know, of course. This is a size comparison of objects in our universe. We'll start with the smallest and go to the largest, most well-known objects we know, of course. I'm a star called the 
sun I'm the center of our solar system You revolve around me As we fly around the galaxy All of the planets in our solar system They orbit while they follow me 230 million years is the time I take to fly around the Milky Way galaxy I don't have a solid surface I'm made up of gases held together by my own gravity I'm made of 92.1% hydrogen H2 and 7.8% helium HE I'm a star called the sun I'm the center of my total mass and 27 million degrees my energy is the reason there is life on earth there'll be no charge cause I'm totally free my mass makes up 99.8% of our solar system nothing in our system's hot as me I'm a star called the sun center of our solar system you revolve around me as we fly around the galaxy The radius 
us around this singularity Which energy and matter cannot escape the black hole's gravity The innermost stable orbits the last place material orbit safely Without the risk of falling past the point of no return in me A photon sphere is a location where gravity is so strong That light can travel in circles and orbiting the black hole are photons I feed on stars, dust and gas and produce jets of near light speed Blasting particles and radiation out of my poles as you can see These are relativistic jets and the last part I'll talk about Thank you for learning with me, now I am out There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big, of course, now here we come. I'm Segway 2, I'm a dwarf spheroidal galaxy, situated in the constellation of Aries. My radius is 110.89 light years, they say. Discovered in 2009 by Sloan Digital Sky Survey. My name's Messier32, a dwarf early type galaxy, am I? 2.65 million light years from Earth, I fly. I was discovered in the year of 1749. I am 6,500 light years across, and that's just fine. I'm small, Magellanic Cloud, or Nubicula Minor, a dwarf irregular. Galaxy, there's nothing finer. I'm near the Milky Way, but not a stone's toss. My diameter's about 7,000 light years across. I'm Triangulum, a spiral galaxy, you see. Sometimes I'm referred to as a pinwheel galaxy. I was discovered officially in 1764. I'm 50,000 light years across. This info is now yours. I'm the Whirlpool Galaxy, also called Messier 51. I'm a spiral galaxy, my arms reach out well I'm spun I was first discovered in the year of 1773 76,000 light years is the distance across me I'm the Milky Way galaxy, a gigantic spiral disk With a bright central bulge that you can't miss I'm 100,000 light years, your sun is AKPC from my center On what is known as Orion's arm, it's a real bender I'm Hope's object, a non-typical galaxy of the type known as a ring galaxy, as you can see. 121,000 light years across, bigger than the Milky Way, discovered by author Hogan, 1958. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big. Of course, now here we come. I'm the Cartwheel Galaxy, a lenticular and ring galaxy, discovered by Fritz Wicke in 1941. I'm 150,000 light years across, my beauty is number one. I am M101, also known as the Pinwheel Galaxy, discovered by Pierre Michon in 1781, if you please. I'm 170,000 light years across, nearly twice the size of the Milky Way, now that's quite a toss. I'm the Andromeda Galaxy, a spiral galaxy, I say, in the nearest major galaxy to your Milky Way. My name stems from the constellation of Andromeda. I'm 220,000 light years across, I'll be seeing ya. I'm NGC 6872, also known as Condor Galaxy. I'm a large part spiral galaxy, I'm sure you'd agree. Discovered in 1835 by John Herschel, the boss. I'm very large at 700,000 light years across. I'm the giant temple galaxy, a disrupted part spiral, you see. I was discovered in the year of 2018. I'm 10 times the size of the Milky Way that's extremely large my friend. I'm 1 million light years long from end to end. I'm IC 1101, a supergiant elliptical galaxy. I'm one of the largest known galaxies found in your universe. You see, discovered in the year of 1790 by John Herschel. 6 million light years across with stars I am full. There's over 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe that we might see. Let's look at this galaxy size comparison from small to big. Of course, now here we come.
I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life One of the top ten brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so I received the name Beetlejuice in 1836 by Sir John Herschel, an astronomer and a great scientist I'm the second brightest star in the Orion constellation after the star Rigel, we're seen from any of Earth's nations. My diameter's about 700 times that of your sun, and I'm 640 light years from the Earth, that's quite a run. But my surface temperature 6,000 degrees in Fahrenheit, cooler than your sun's surface 10,000 degrees, yeah that's right. I'm so massive if you replaced your sun with me, I'd reach past the orbit of Jupiter, I'm gigantic you see. I'm considered a young star at just 10 million years old soon to explode into a supernova scientists say so i am beetlejuice i'm nearing the end of my life one of the top 10 brightest stars up in the night sky i am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so a red super giant is an aging giant star that has consumed its core supply of hydrogen fuel that's what they are helium has a Accumulated in my core so well And hydrogen's undergoing nuclear fusion in my outer shells When my outer shells expand I take on a red color Because I'm cooler than I was I'm happy to discover Red supergiants are the largest known stars in the universe And I'm expected to supernova onto the next verse During fusion heavier atoms are created Until my core is iron That's when I'll run out of fuel without even been trying. When that happens to a star as massive as me, the entire star collapses and explodes as a supernova, you see. When I do supernova, I'll create quite a sight. Some predict I'll even look like your full moon's brightest light. The radiation I put off from becoming a supernova wouldn't affect Earth because I'm 640 light years over. I am Beetlejuice, I'm nearing the end of my life. One of the top 10 and brightest stars up in the night sky I am a red super giant expected to explode into a supernova in a hundred thousand years or so